Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite dragon articles of all time, Gods of the Elves from Dragon 60. It's by the great Roger Moore, who did a lot of really quality writing for TSR back in the day. So we're going to take a good look at the pantheon of the elves from this dragon article, and of course it keys out of the non-human deities from, from uh, Deities Demigods. So pretty excited about hitting this one. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, Gods of the Elves on page 121. There are a few entries for the Gods of the Elves and Deities and Demigods, and I always like that. First we get Coralon Lerithian, who is the greater god, kind of the god papa of the Elven pantheon. From him sprang all other Elven deities and all other Elves. He's a greater god. Starts out at AC negative 4, 350 hit points, 95% MR. His alignment is chaotic good. His worshippers' alignment is chaotic good, elves. His symbol is the quarter moon. He lives in the plain of Olympus. He operates as a 15th level cleric, I'm sorry, 13th level cleric, 13th level druid, 20th level ranger, and 20th level magic user, 20th level illusionist. This guy has got it going on across the board. He is the big daddy of the elves, the creator god. Um... He's, I like this guy a lot. I've had a couple of players play Worshippers of Coralon. He's a, a good one to worship. As the leader of the Pantheon, he's uh, always there. He's he's always in, in charge. I just like him. I like the myths that have sprung up around him, the myths in D&D &D that have sprung up around him in 3rd edition especially were uh, pretty interesting where he and Loth had been lovers and she felt betrayed, etc. So he is the, the High Father. Uh, his clerics always wear blue quarter moon talisman. And uh, they name a few other gods of uh, the elves in here, which is pretty interesting. They include Rilithane, Rilithane or Relithil, as the god of nature, Lobolas Enithor, as god of longevity, and Hanalias Selenil, as goddess of romantic love. But interestingly, we didn't get any listings for those gods. It was kind of neat. Uh, I know that uh, I played with a DM. I wasn't in his campaign, but he was just a friend of mine who uh, used to DM at that club I used to belong to. So I never had occasion to play in his game, but we discussed this quite a bit. And he had developed Hanalee Selenin uh, for something in his campaign. And then we come to the gods of the aquatic elves, Deep Seychelles, who is a lesser goddess, AC negative 3, 300 hit points, 100% uh, MR underwater. Magic resistance is standard, out of water. Chaotic good, chaotic good worshippers are chaotic good aquatic elves and sailors, which is interesting because it doesn't say they have to be elven sailors. The symbol is a dolphin. He lives on the plain of Olympus. Operates a 19th level cleric, 15th level fighter, 12th level magic user, 12th level illusionist, and 10th level bard. He's the knowledgeable one, the being who always knows where food or the enemy can be found. He's the master of the dolphins. And of their, uh, in 20 of their strongest, always follow him around. Mortal sailors sacrifice to the god for their safety, and aquatic elven clerics take offerings, take these offerings to religious ceremonies to coincide with high and low tides. The sea elves, like their friends the dolphins, are mortal enemies of sharks. Clerics often conduct ritual shark hunts. Now, I've never had anybody that I, I that used this one, but it's a pretty neat one. I, I like this, uh, that there were more than one elf god here. And then, of course, we come to Lalth. The Demon Queen of Spiders. She's a lesser goddess. Interestingly, for a lot of times, uh, there was some confusion as to whether the Demon Lords of the Abyss, if any of them were gods or not. Yet here we had Loth sitting as a lesser goddess, and we're listing her as a Demon Lord of the Abyss. So a lot of us took that extrapolation and said, well, yeah, they are. They're lesser gods. But anyway, to her stats. Armor class negative 10. And she's a special too. I'm not going to worry about that. 66 hit points, which always struck me as a typo. Uh, that should be at least 166 in my opinion. Uh, she had 70% MR. Alignment is chaotic evil, and her worshippers alignment chaotic evil, specifically drow. Her symbol is the spider. The, her plane is the abyss. She has cleric druid powers, like you wouldn't believe. She fights a 16 hit dice monster. And special illusionist magic user powers. Dark elves worship the demon lords of the... The Abyss, the best known example of these, is the Demon Queen Lalth. 
Louth appears in Vault of the Drow and Queen of the Demon Web Pits. Louth is very powerful. I'm not going to uh, dwell on Louth a ton today, simply because she deserves a video all by herself, or at least the Drow Pantheon, which is coming up. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on just Louth today. Uh, and then they even note, so it's not a typo, Louth has only 66 hit points, but her high armor class prevents most damage. She's able to heal herself at will up to three times a day. 66 hit points is still not that much, especially once we got weapon specialization, uh, which you extrapolate to other deities having, Louth becomes kind of a fragile goddess. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find her skills. Uh, I read her over and now I'm lost. Oh, well, she has different uh, powers and abilities coming from her cleric slash magic user illusionist stuff. Again, I'm not going to go deep into Louth today simply because I'm going to be doing a future video on Drow by themselves. I only present her here because she's part of the non-human deities. And now the last of the non-human deities presented here, Bilifane Balathil, who is mentioned earlier here, and he is the Wood Elf God. He's a lesser God, armor class negative 2, 317 hit points, 75% MR. He's chaotic good. His worshippers are chaotic good Wood Elves. His symbol is the Oak. He lives on Olympus. He's 14th level of Cleric, 14th level Druid, 15th level Ranger, 12th level Magic User, 12th level Illusionist, 10th level Monk, 10th level Bard. This guy's got it going on. Uh, again, I've never really seen this guy used, but it's kind of neat that he's here. Uh, he's likened by his clerics to a giant ethereal oak, so huge. Its roots mingle with the roots of every other plant in the world, kind of a yig's drizzle kind of thing. His areas of concern are all creatures have the opportunity that all creatures have the opportunity to act out their roles in nature without abusing them. Clerics are his clerics are deadly enemies of those who hunt for sport and those who harm trees maliciously or unnecessarily. So you see where the wood elves kind of get their shtick from, uh, right there from this guy. Now we're going to take a look at the gods from Dragon num number sixty. Again, a superior issue of Dragon Magazine. This issue was out in April of 82, a great time for Dragon Magazine, an excellent article about the elves themselves, and now the gods of the elves by Roger and Georgia Moore. So Roger's wife helped him on this one. Hanalee Selenil is the goddess of romantic love and beauty. She's armor class negative four, 312 hit points, 95% MR. She's chaotic good, her worshippers' alignments are good and neutral alignments of elves and those who enjoy beauty or are in love. And aren't we all at one time or another? Her symbol is the Heart of Gold, plain as Olympus. She operates as a 14th level druid, cleric, 10th level druid. Magic user is 16th level, 15th level illusionist, and a 12th level bard. So she's pretty powerful. She is depicted as a lesser goddess, uh, but she, she's got some high stats. Uh, she has an immense crystal fountain and pool, which she keeps watch over her followers. When she bathes herself in the waters of the pool, called Evergold, her charisma is enhanced for one day. Uh, Goddess Aphrodite sometimes shares the pool with her. So kind of neat. Uh, Goddess worshippers of Hanalee Selenil may once during their lifetime be granted an opportunity, an increase of two charisma points versus the opposite gender. Uh, so... It's kind of neat. Uh, a lot of these elves do grant things to their followers on, on a l rare limited basis, which I kind of like too. Those can be great adventure hooks. Now we come to Erevan Ilisir, who is the god of mis mischief and change. Armor class negative one, 290 hit points, 85% MR. His alignment is chaotic neutral, and his worshippers' alignment are all chaotics and thieves, specifically elves. His symbol is a Nova star with asymmetrical rays. He lives in the plane of Olympus, 8th level Druid, 7th level Ranger, 18th level Illusionist, 20th level Thief, and 10th level Bard. I like this guy. He's fickle, utterly unpredictable, who can change his appearance at will. He enjoys causing trouble for its own sake, but his pranks are rather either rarely either helpful or deadly. So he's just kind of doing what he wants to do because it's fun to do. So it's it's a fun god. I, I had a thief who followed him, who was a worshiper of Erevan Ilisir years ago, uh, a thief named Hidalgo. 
and those Doc Savage fans know where I got the name Hidalgo from. It's the um, a place in South America where Doc Savage gets a lot of his gold that funds his various expeditions and funds his operation. I named the thief for him. So it's pretty neat. I, I like Erevan Illusir, and he's seen a lot of action in my campaign. Eredri Fenye, uh, a goddess of air and weather, is a lesser goddess. She is armor class negative 5, 322 hit points, 80% MR. She's chaotic good, tends toward neutrality. Her worshiper's alignment, I'll have to see below because I know it's in the description. Uh, the cloud with a sil bird silhouette is her symbol. She lives in Olympus and Gladsheim. She is a 14th level druid, a 10th level fighter, and a 10th level bard. So a little narrower focus for this goddess. She is a lesser goddess. Uh, she appears to be a tall, elf-like woman with feathered hair and eyebrows. And from her back spring a pair of large, bird-like wings. So her followers, any elves of non-lawful and non-evil alignment may, may worship her. Elves who desire certain weather conditions make the most frequent sacrifices to her. Because she, she is the goddess of weather. And her cult is also popular with elves who possess flying mounts, such as griffins, hippogriffs, pegasi, etc. So, again, pretty neat little lesser goddess for your elven pantheon. We go to our last two. Leblis Enethor, who is the god of longevity. Elves are very long-lived, so this guy's got a good portfolio. He is a lesser god, armor class negative 3, 310 hit points, 93% magic resistance. Okay. Alignment is chaotic good. His worshippers are chaotic good elves. His symbol is the setting sun. He lives on Olympus. 14th level cleric, 12th level druid, 18th level magic user, 16th level illusionist, and 12th level bard. As you see, bard is pretty common for the, the elven pantheon. Like Coral and Larethian, uh, Labelus Enereth uh, variously appears as male or female. Regardless of gender, he always has silvery hair and misty gray eyes. Uh, creation of the elven ra at the creation of the elven ra ra races, Labellus blessed them with longevity and pronounced the passage of time would do little to alter their appearances. So he's the acknowledged master of time and aging. Once per round, he can fix you with his gaze, then he puts you to a temporal stasis. He can age you or restore your youth. Uh, he's immune to time stop, temporal stasis, slow paralysis, hold, anything like that. So, pretty good god. I've never seen him used it, uh, in the campaigns, but hey. And Solinar Thelandira, god of archery and hunting. This guy saw a lot of action with us once the uh, bow specialization came in in Arthur Kane in 1985. Suddenly, everybody was worshipping the god of archery and hunting. He is a lesser god, armor class negative 2, 308 hit points, 85% MR. He is chaotic good. His worshippers' alignment is all good and neutral hunters and warriors, specifically elves. His symbol is the silver arrow with green fletching. He, he is, operates a 12th level druid, a 17th level ranger, a 10th level magic user, a 12th level thief, and an 8th level bard. Clad in a cl great cloak of living leaves, Selenar strides through the forest in search of game to seek out and destroy and to seek out and destroy evil. He only uses his bow, but he can fire the thing... Very far, he cannot be surprised at any being within 48 inches of him due to his incre incredibly keen senses. Um, he, his favorite tactic is to physically touch a deity and then retreat. Once by himself again, once he's alone, he can then manufacture a special arrow slaying designed specifically to kill that one opponent should it strike home. That type of opponent can kill any type of target up to but not including demigod status. So you tick this guy off, he'll brush your shoulder lightly in a crowd, go home, make up an arrow with black feathers on it for you, and you'll be off on your way. So pretty neat. I liked him. So that's a, a quick look at the gods. We get nice sage advice about the elves here. And then we get a nice look at the half-elven point of view, which was of particular interest to me since I ran one of the few half-elves in our campaign as a player character. So there we have a quick look at the gods of the elves. By an excellent article by Roger and Georgia Moore. Uh, these dragon articles are not that easy to come by anymore, unfortunately. I know that there was a dragon set on CD-ROM in about 99 or 2000 that was out. Uh, and then if you are lucky enough to have some of the old ones, you can find them. Uh, 
if you Google around a little bit, sometimes you can find them, but I'm not, I don't show, know the legality of some of those locations, so I'm not going to link, put any links there. So that's a look at the Elves of the Gods uh, today on page 121. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment below. Positive criticisms, always welcome. Uh, please remember the Patreon, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for spending your time with me today on page 121.